Okay, let's <laughs> let's just go over what our scripture here says. This happens to be the New King James Version, which I also like. First Timothy 4, 1 through 2 says, Now the Spirit, that's the Numa, the Ruach Kodesh, our God, expressly says that in when the latter times, so there's the last days, and then there's the latter times of the last days, is how I look at it. Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. It means that thing inside of them that tells them, wait a minute, you're doing something wrong. You ought to be doing this or this doesn't work anymore because somebody has taken the soil of their heart and just burned it to death, like with a hot iron where it doesn't function the way that God implemented it into the human through Adam and his seed, all the children through Adam, and we're all completely in control of that soil of our heart and what we do with it. And it's really important because it almost seems like when somebody starts going down a path of certain sins, those certain sins can start having that searing effect on the heart. And then just... I think, too, that there's also something to be said for a level of danger and length of a sustained unbelief. And probably a lot of other things could be said about that. But basically, to pull out of this, at the time of a manufactured apostasy, which is what we're seeing right now, the Holy Spirit is saying... I'm telling you that these are the things that these wicked spirits, liars, will be communicating, and it's through their doctrines, and it'll come through human beings. And those human beings will be big, giant liars, and they'll be hypocrites, where they tell you one thing, but then they don't apply that same standard to themselves. See, they're supremists. They're better than you. They're different than you. They don't need what you need, but they're going to establish a perimeter around you, a snare, and then they're going to elevate themselves above you. Having their own conscience completely seared off with a hot iron. Boy, is that happening today. Okay, now it's going to get interesting. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods and then God goes on to explain that he made all things and this is post the cross and he sanctifies things they're consecrated by the word of prayer and so on and so forth and there is a level of liberty to what you can choose for yourself on some level so we know that there are many people along the way that have tried to implement these things before I'm thinking of the Catholic Church with their little deal about, you know, the priesthood is not allowed to marry and all that stuff. And then I can think of a lot of different people that try to put you back under the law and say what you can and can't eat. And of course, you know, you have to use discretion. You can't just eat anything. There are some things that are truly not healthy and good for you to eat, but it's not like being back under the Old Testament law for the Jews. Although, in your sanctification, you may tighten up some things. It's in your liberty to do. But what you can't do is say that everybody has to do a certain, you know, thing when it comes to these two categories. Because as we just found out, there are doctrines of demons that come along and challenge the wicked spirits through humans challenge what the Holy Spirit has already said in his word. So would you be surprised to know that they're going to, before it's already being put out to the world with this blood sacrifice covenant with the Noahides, the 70 nations that we've talked about so much on the Mount of Olives with Israel as their Lord and Savior and their coming Messiah. 
there is this article and some of it is just weird. And it's almost like they start leading you in the direction of saying, the left is bad. The left is naughty. They want to promote vegetarianism, birth control, and cannibalism. Weird, 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 and more weird. And then just a little more weird. But as you start going through this and they start telling you how weird this whole climate change thing is and how all these leftist people want to you know, take you and warp you into this weird, new, brave world, 1984, you know, creepy Creepington, where they want to change the food pyramid. They want to do all this reduction in meat consumption. And this article, you know, also tell you about the evils of Bernie Sanders and and uh, his population control. So they're sporting this idea that now instead of loving your neighbor, you should eat your neighbor. <laughs> but, you know, you can just see the calling card of Lucifer with that because God said, what, don't eat your neighbor, right? So Lucifer and his band of psychopaths are like, totally eat your neighbor. And, and <laughs> this will be a moderate solution to global warming. <laughs> okay. So you're tapping through this article that's called Climate Change, an excuse for the left to promote the, the vegetarianism, birth control, and cannibalism. I don't know if I told you that or not. Brand new, just out today from your good friends, the Habbatist Jews <laughs> from Breaking Israel News. So you're meandering through this, and they're trying to make a case. Some people somewhere might want more birth control, and then they're talking about Elizabeth Warren, and She's, you know, talking about proving this idea of, you know, universal vegeta vegetarianism. They're going, take your cheeseburgers away. What do you think about that? Well, they cast it all in the light of it's the left's, you know, weirdness. But then watch what they do because this is just expert. And he's the guy that wrote it, this Habatus Jew right here, Berkowitz. And... You know, it's all under the guise of environmental justice, claiming that climate change had the most impact on these various entities, and bringing up, you know, healing the planet, and oh no, if in 12 years you don't do exactly what we say, we're in big trouble. Um, we've got to solve these problems. God did not know how to make a really good planet. And, I mean, it just gets more and more freaky as you read this thing, right? And then they start talking about how this weird dude, again, wants you to be tricked into tasting human flesh. And then people will totally go for it, right? Well, when you consider how many animal die-offs somebody has produced, I always thought in the Bible that it was God doing it. But now that I understand this darker world that we live in with Lockheed Martin and all these poisonings and all this uh, equipment that they have, all these animal deaths and honeybee deaths and just death this and death that. I mean, there's a lot of animals in the last five or six years. Now I'm convinced it's evil man, right? So they're pushing you towards this ultimate thing where you'll worship what they say you're going to worship and they play with the food supply. So that's all starting to come out. And you're starting to go, well, it's the left, right? It's the left who are big giant whatevers, right? But then you start to find out that, hey, some of the rabbis from Chabad think it's a pretty great idea. So this rabbi, who is the director of this ecology and religious study group focused on the environment, he also thinks it's all a really good idea. Emphasize the importance of making decisions based on moral truths. Moral truths, you know, like the Noahide. Like what we tell you you're going to do rather than reacting negatively out of partisan politics. So same goal, different reasoning. Same goal, but do what we want because we're the ones that tell you to. You're totally not in control. We are. We're the Habatist Jews and we're in control. We're running the show. And I don't have a problem with all Jews. That's why I keep saying Habatist Jews because those are the ones that are pushing the Noahide. Those are the ones that are trying to push Jesus out. Those are the ones that are trying to turn Christianity and flip it on its head. And so you have people like Mark Biltz and many others that are saying Christianity is in the ditch. 
Gotta get rid of that Christianity. So this big flippy flop is coming, and then it starts to get interesting here. And once you get out of the dramatically extreme response to someone taking away your meat, what? It's easy to see that not only will it be possible, the good rabbi says, but it would be hugely beneficial to the individual and society to reevaluate our approach to eating meat. So this rabbi says, and then he gives you his religious reasoning. And because he's a Jew and the Jews believe the Habbatist Jews believe they're superior to you, they're going to teach you. Dumb Gentile, they would say. In the temple times, a person had meat a few times a year. It was a treat and it was a reason to celebrate with God. So now since Jerusalem's going to be the capital of the world and we're going to be your Lord and Savior, we're going to dictate the whole thing. We're going to be your mommy and your daddy and your nanny with our really great AI and our robots and our cameras and our surveillance and our Chinese credit uh, social scores and every other tool of ramrodding down your throat with the cooperation of the governments of the world, our will and our will alone. You're going to be doing without meat because we get to, yay, add on to the Noahide. Get ready to have all your rights taken away because they'll just add another thing and another thing and another thing. And wait, 14 more things today alone, just saying, to the Noahide. It will be an unending torture of them having total control. And if you have read about Jesus' experiences with them, which were fun, not. He talks about how they would strain out the littlest, tiniest thing, but then they would miss the greater point of something. And it was oftentimes justice, truth, you know, love, mercy. But they would, they would, they would tie their little spices and stuff. They'd get it right down to the smallest little, here's your little bit of cumin. But then they would completely obliterate the, the more important parts of, of the law at that time. These are the kind of people that you're talking about. They, they don't really care about what's true. They only care about abusing power and controlling others. That's what the world is about ready to get signed up for. Yay! So if you like your hamburgers, you like your cheeseburgers, you like your steak, that's all going away by design. So as a Jew, the, the laws of the kosher slaughtering, okay, now he's going to start wrapping in the Noahide laws, watch this, expert level deception are very serious, the rabbi says. In fact, God did not intend for man to eat meat. What? In fact, God did not intend for man to eat meat. Well, then why did he tell Noah, go for it? The whole process of the kosher slaughter which focuses on removing the blood, seems to be, oh, look, they're tikkun, they're fixing for the human need for blood. See, they regard Gentiles as little animals, right? You're, they, they would say, you're all a bunch of little psychopaths, and we're going to come and we're going to train you. We're going to put up some fencing around you. You're going to take these no hides. You're going to do what we say, and you're going to like it. <laughs> So the rabbi noted that a special status in God's eyes is indicated by the restrictions in consumption. Jews have the law of whatever, which severely limits the types of permitted foods. The rabbi pointed to the Noahide prohibition against eating the limb from a living animal. Who does that? No one. In what was apparently <laughs> a widespread practice. Ah, uh, okay. Prove it. The Noahide laws incumbent upon all humanity included a requirement to subdue our more animalistic methods of consumption. So, see, they're changing it. They're altering it. And then he says that the first command God gave to Adam and Eve. So it wasn't, um, do not eat of this tree. It wasn't that command, right? And the day that you do of it, you'll die. And you spiritually died. And then it set off the consequences of physical death. And now... We're all in this fallen Adam unless you've opted out through Jesus Christ. And now you're in Jesus Christ as the son of God who's going to shout for joy on the Feast of Trumpets. Hopefully this year. Don't know. But hopefully. Anyhow, Adam and Eve were limiting. We're having, their, uh, we're having to limit their consumption. Something that God did not have to do to the animals. So Adam and Eve, you're a train wreck. But the animals totally are okay. Don't even worry. 
And then he talks about the tree of life of uh, uh, knowledge. With knowledge was the status of being a man comes responsibility. So, I mean, he's just full of himself with this stuff. There's no doubt that at least some people need to eat meat. But at the same time, there is a blemish in the Western culture when it comes to meat consumption, especially around fast food. And it all has this spiritual connectivity to it. Fix, fixing eating is something we need to do to bring, oh, look, redemption. Since it's one of the major ways we relate to the environment. So there's this other guy they introduced with this interfaith center for sustainable development. 